The RTX 4080 is actually the most expensive 80 class silicon that Nvidia has sold in four generations now. And it has a 4080 problem. Don't worry, there's a trash can down there. It went exactly where it's supposed to go. So today we're gonna to talk about the problem with the 4080 and how Nvidia can't seem to sell them. This chart shows both the original MSRP and the inflation adjusted launch price for flagships dating back to the GTX 480. It was stable until recently, and then it skyrocketed with the 40 series. But we know what some people are thinking, which is that choosing to plot 80 series cards isn't fair if Nvidia chooses the names anyway and has decided that the 80 series is no longer flagships because there's 4090s now. But there's always been a card like that. There were Titans before. Oh, that one was a little closer. <laughs> it did make it in though. There were Titans before them and they've shifted the naming, yes, but the idea of the pricing at a functional flagship level, that's still the same problem. And even so, here's our response to that. This line plots the die area for each of those cards. Although Nvidia tends to fluctuate up and down a bit, the area for the 4080 shot downwards while the price skyrocketed 50% over the inflation adjusted 3080s price. And people aren't buying them this time, at least not so much that they're out of stock. Just look at this market footage we took recently. Today we're talking about how the 4080s have been left abandoned on shelves, at least compared to the last few generations and even compared to the 4090. And that's shelves from the USA all the way over to Taiwan where we just were. Let's get started. Before that, this video is brought to you by Fractal and the Pop Air cases. The Fractal Pop did well in our recent review, performing admirably thermally while also offering unique color variations for the chassis body. The Fractal Pop Air is a relatively compact mid-tower while still offering ease of installation features and it even has optional five and a quarter inch mounts for those who still use front panel hardware like optical drives. Learn more at the link in the description below. The 4080s haven't sold out yet. They've been available since launch day and they still are. They never globally sold out, unlike the 4090, for example. And this is a point that EVJ CEO brought up when we interviewed him in an upcoming video where he talks about a judgment day for GPU prices in the future. And he noted that the 4080s are still in stock and have been in stock. And that's because reality is beginning to kick in for Nvidia. And a reality check for the prices, just like what happened with the 20 series, is on its way. This is history repeating itself. The 2080 Ti, for example, launched at $1,200 at the time. And the 2080 was the card that everyone reviewed and said, just if you buy any of them, although you should get the 1080 Ti at that time when RTX didn't even have any games, then get the 2080 and not the 2080 Ti. And then with the 30 series, they swung it back, they corrected the prices, and everyone was happy except for the stock problem that came a couple weeks after launch and persisted. But now we're back in that 20 series dilemma. A smaller die area means reduced cost to manufacture compared to the larger dies, at least at the simplest level. Although the process node also improved, this price hike is more than inflation, as our chart, and we'll bring it back, shows, and it's more than manufacturing costs too. In fact, AMD recently showed manufacturing cost increases in its own chart, something Nvidia should be doing if it wants to defend its price hikes better. And AMD tried to build an argument for cost increases, but we can't get past the fact that the 4080 is now a smaller die with a 50% price increase, inflation adjusted. It looks even worse if you don't adjust. The 4080 is a classic upsell to the 4090, disguised by launching after the flagship SKU this time, instead of alongside it, and also disguised by the fervor around dumping old inventory. Our review demonstrated that the 4080 is an example of product stagnation, where it was less than 1% uplift for 1% more money at best. And that was effectively running in place. Again, at best, we're losing ground at worst. Regardless of the many other variables, like logistics that go into GPU manufacturing, the simple fact is that larger dies cost more. We don't know what the real cost is for Nvidia. They don't share that, but we can create a ratio factoring in the cost of the cards before RAM is considered in the scenario. 
Uh, the table we're about to show isn't some masterful metric that no one else could ever achieve. We were just putting some numbers into a spreadsheet and we thought we saw an interesting trend. So don't read too far into the numbers we're about to show uh, because some parts of it are potentially arguable as arbitrary. But even still, this table, is, it's here to provide some concepts to play around with for GPU pricing. We have the card's name, GPU die, and size, the percentage of the CUDA cores it has versus a full die, MSRP, and the calculation we just mentioned. That calculation is for the die area versus the cost. The 4090's die is called AD102, with a large area of 608 millimeters squared. The 4090's MSRP is $1,600. So with our definitely not industry standard, but still interesting and useful metric, the MSRP per millimeter squared comes out to $2.63. And that's without factoring the higher memory capacity of the 4090 at 24 gigabytes versus 16 gigabytes, which is unaccounted for in this table, into the consideration versus a 4080. Doing the same calculation on the 4080 with its much smaller 8103 die gives us $3.17 per millimeter squared, 21% higher cost per area than the 4090. The 4090 has a 60% larger die and 50% more memory for only 33% more MSRP. Even if better performance per dollar sits with the 4090, Nvidia knows not everyone can afford that level of card. So they have a more profitable safety net for NVIDIA at least, underneath it in the form of the 4080. And we won't get started on AMD in this one. That'll be maybe for a different topic with the 7900 XT, where NVIDIA is not quite playing the same game where AMD's XT looks like a decoy product or something that they put out there to push you explicitly towards the next one up. Because NVIDIA, although they are trying to upsell to a 4090, recognizes that the $400 gap is more than a decoy product can fix. So, we've all seen the internet comments about what people think about the 4080. Let's see what some merchants out in the world think from our recent Taiwan trip. So, we were wondering, like, how how the 4080 does in Taiwan, like, still in Bali and, uh... Yeah, I know, I know, but, uh, the truth is, they are best still here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's like the same in the U.S. Yeah, have many people bought the 4080s? <laughs> because the yeah. price is a little bit hard and then everyone thinks it doesn't have the, the price is so hard that it doesn't have what it costs. Uh, so the, that's the most of the people just only buy it. No, let's buy the 3090s. Right, right, right. Back to the chart. What's more interesting is comparing the 4080 to previous generations. The 30 series saw the larger GA102 die used in at least five cards with MSRPs ranging from $2,000 for the 3090 Ti all the way down to the original 10 gigabyte version of the 3080 for $700. The 3090 Ti comes out to the same MSRP per millimeter squared as the 4080 and the 3080 10 gigabyte calculates to be the lowest on the table. But that was launched at the start of all this and was actually an impressive value. And if you were around for those reviews at the time, that was before anyone knew about the impending GPU shortage, the sentiment was pretty much shared across most reviews, which was this was a massive change in direction for Nvidia from the 20 series, and it was sort of like their 1080 Ti moment happening all over again, where value genuinely looked good. We were excited about it, and that's kind of been rare for the last couple of years with GPU launches. For another comparison on the chart, the 2080 Ti had an absolutely massive 754 millimeter squared die, which is about double the area in millimeters squared of the 4080's GPU. Despite that, the 2080 Ti Founders Edition and most partner models cost around the same $1,200 MSRP. That price was crazy high back then, and other than the 30 series, the price has continued to grow, and after the 3080, uh, it was already growing with the 3090 and then the 3090 Ti. At least one of those didn't even have an MSRP when it launched. They just put it out there and they were like, well, here you go. Let's see what it sells for. Uh, that's, not, that's not a joke, by the way. They actually launched it without an MSRP because they'd given up at that point. So the 4080 has the smallest die for an 80 class card since the GTX 1080, but at the same time, it's tied for the highest 80 class MSRP. We know that higher end, more advanced silicon costs more to make, but the ratio of the price versus the class of GPU has gotten way out of hand at this point. And uh, on one hand, performance is what matters and the video card's name is somewhat arbitrary, but on the other hand, it's really not because People are rightfully mad that at this point they have 
been led to feel that the 80 class is in fact a flagship and realistically the 90 is just sort of replacing the Titan class anyway. So while we can argue semantics over the names, it's kind of irrelevant. Uh, even at the psychology side of things, ignoring the pricing structure of it, you're in a scenario where now people have been trained to feel the 80 class is something they can afford if they are buying at the high end, and it is the best that they can get. And the 90, you can mentally sort of uh, quarantine as a Titan class piece of silicon. When the 80 class creeps 50% higher in a generation, obviously people are going to be mad because they feel like they are coming down in their class of what they can afford. It's not a great feeling. So the point is, on that side of things, the name carries certain customer expectations on the social side too. People don't want to feel like they're stagnant in life or sliding backwards. And so whether or not that's fair to NVIDIA, the fact of the matter is that it is being considered here. But the most important thing is none of that. That's just another angle to throw out there for anyone who might want to argue the naming side of things. And certainly, I used to think that the naming was purely arbitrary. And over time, we've come to realize, uh, actually, no, it's really not. The performance is what matters, of course. And the performance to price really is what matters. And we have numbers for that. We have dozens of charts from our reviews that show the value is terrible for the 4080. NVIDIA knows this, and it's sliding the product stack. NVIDIA just needs the customer to not care enough. The problem for NVIDIA is that customers that do care. It's not just the benchmark heavy media like us who care at this point. This is something everyone's caught on to. So is, are more people buying 30 series or like 3,000? Surely they are finding the 3080. Yeah, the most one, they were finding the 3080. Yeah. And sales aren't just bad in Taiwan where we were recently. We did some quick checks with retailers online and physically around the US, and we spot checked some of the current pricing and availability for the 4080. And just as a note, pricing and availability and stock are numbers that change nearly constantly. So these numbers were accurate at the time we wrote the script, and obviously you may see the stock numbers fluctuate a bit depending on when the video goes live and when you see the video. Anyway, we found it a little unusual for a brand new GPU, the quantities we were seeing in the stock, and well, here's the table. First off, the major online retailers in the US, like Newegg and Best Buy, were actually out of stock when we checked after Black Friday. This is usually what it looks like after a GPU launch is met with the world's leading sales holiday. The SKUs on Newegg are going in and out of stock, but mostly out. We see this pattern break, though, once we look at Micro Center. We looked at four locations to get a decent sample size, and of those, only the LA area store in Tustin serving a massive populace was totally sold out. The other three had only partially sold through the stock of 4080s, again, unusual. I gave one of the stores a call and asked if this is behavior they typically see. The answer was no. Typically, the behavior is there are zero in stock, and this one wasn't selling well. The Chicago and Rockville stores in particular had a high number of cards still in stock at the time we checked. And at $1,300 average per card, that's a lot of inventory sitting on shelves waiting to sell, and it's a lot of frozen cash for the companies in the chain trying to make a dollar. Likewise, European online retailers Mind Factory and Case King still had 4080s in stock and ready to buy at the time we checked. Mind Factory seems to hide out of stock SKUs, but the ones we can see showed healthy stock levels. Mind Factory also shows how many have been sold, and at the time of writing the visible SKUs, because we can't tally the ones that are sold out, we only counted 195 units. That's a minimum though, it's probably more than that, we just can't see them all. Either way, not impressive, and we're not intimately familiar with Mind Factory's usual volume, but it does seem low when we compare it to other GPUs on the site. Taking a look at the price range in general shows options from the base MSRP of $1,200 for the Founders Edition on NVIDIA's website, if you can get it, all the way up to $1,550 for the ASUS ROG Strix OC. The highest end cards of one tier being closely priced to the low end cards of the next tier up, it's not really new, but it seems particularly bad this time. The base price of the 4090 is $50 more than the Strix OC. It's like uh, two or three percent or something like that higher. So at that point, it's just a poor choice to buy that 4080 versus the cheapest possible 4090, even if it has a terrible cooler design, uh, if you can find a 4090. But that's not a mistake. 
is, again, it's also not quite new. It just is particularly noticeable this time. Either way, whether you buy them or not, NVIDIA at least made its money on the initial numbers. And looking around the other stores in Taipei, every single stall that we walked past had 4080s. We talked with some of the vendors there, and what we learned in speaking with the actual bosses who run the retail stores was that the most popular card right now is the 3080, but they were all sold out. So I asked, what's the next most popular one after that? They said it's the 3060 Ti, keeping in mind Taiwan has a lower base income than places like the US, so that plays in as well. I asked, what about after that? Is it the 4080? And they said, uh, no, it's not the 4080. It was the 4090 or the 1650. But NVIDIA gets its money for the first round when the board partners buy the GPUs. It's not really making the money necessarily when you go and buy the ASUS Strix OC. That's where ASUS gets its cut and its money back for the GPU it purchased. So there is some interplay there where NVIDIA does things like marketing development fund or it does rebates uh, to try and help manufacturers soak some of the cost as prices fluctuate. And when they inevitably drop the price, certainly that will be something that the, the board partners are asking for. But it's on the board partners to figure out how to package it into a compelling and profitable complete video card within NVIDIA's very strict guidelines where they now set price caps, where they say you can't go higher than this, and they already have the price floor where they say it's not fair if you price under this or you just literally can't because it's too expensive anyway. So it's retailers like all of these we've been talking about who end up stuck holding a bag of 4080s. Uh, because everyone else kind of got a little bit of their money when they were on the way out the door, and now they're sitting on extra stock. Another takeaway from this data is that the average price of a partner model 4080 is around $100 to $120 over MSRP. The $1,200 were sold out everywhere except Micro Center, and it'll be interesting to see how quickly or if at all those models refresh. Because speaking with board partners recently, confirming something we heard years ago and published years ago, if you've been around a while on the channel, what we learned is that often the board partners will launch an MSRP model, which is in some cases very difficult for them to actually make money off of, where you're talking extremely slim margins if they want to provide real support. They'll launch an MSRP model, they'll let it sell through, and then, oops, they never restock it. They restock the things that are maybe 50 bucks higher, 100 bucks higher to try and keep the margins healthier. This isn't out of nowhere either. Back in 2020, we were told uh, by an unnamed partner that this tactic would be a worst case method to technically provide a product that hits the advertised MSRP without actually intending to follow through on it for any period of time longer than when people like the press are actively monitoring the prices. Uh, and that was especially to satisfy NVIDIA's at the time aggressively low MSRPs where they needed to compete and without losing too much money for the partners in the process because we were told directly that NVIDIA's MSRP targets weren't realistic and, quote, partners would be bankrupt, end quote, if they followed them. Now, in that video that we published talking about the aggressive pricing and how partners were struggling to make an actually good product for the price that NVIDIA listed, we learned that NVIDIA's guidance then only left 4 to $5 for the entire cost of the cooling solution which gets you a bottom of the barrel flower style cooler only capable of handling low heat loads. That exact number only applied to the mid-range cards being talked about then. But we know that the complex high performance cooler designs on partner cards can now cost upwards of $100 to manufacture. And this actually gets really interesting on its own, but we're gonna save that for a separate piece where it'll be in our EVGA follow-up piece of what's next for them. We'll be talking about cooler costs for Nvidia's FE versus NVIDIA's partners cards. When we combine this with what we learned when talking with EVGA about leaving the video card market, it paints the picture that NVIDIA's price guidance only makes sense for the FE cards and no longer does for partners. NVIDIA doesn't have to pay itself margin on the cost of the GPU core and memory like the board partners do, which is a huge advantage. It can put that money into other things like it's cooler or um, it's pockets. This puts partners in a bad position because they rely on the higher priced cards to actually make money. They have to compete against the now very competent Founders Edition at MSRP. The partner MSRP cards, from what the board partners tell us, are barely breaking even and depending on the RMAs or their programs that they offer after sales, 
risk losing them money. So they have to kill those SKUs quickly. It's a lose-lose unless you're NVIDIA. We've done this discussion in the past, but let's just briefly talk about what it is partners provide for the market that NVIDIA doesn't. First off, they're sort of internal competitors where they're all selling the same part, but because they're doing different versions of it, it does help to keep NVIDIA in check. So partners like EVGA, as we showed in our Kingpin Lab Tour, have invented technologies like four-way SLI, or they've actually gone and improved the power delivery systems. They've improved cooling solutions to the point where these things have to exist now for NVIDIA because its old ones were so embarrassingly bad that every single review that at least we published for probably seven years was basically, if you buy it, don't buy the reference model. So the partners have contributed. Jensen Huan, the CEO of NVIDIA, doesn't seem to think so from what we understand. His belief from what EVGA and the other board partners have told us is that uh, if you're just providing a cooler, you don't deserve to make that much more money on what NVIDIA is selling. But it's not that simple. The coolers are advanced too. And beyond the coolers, there's after sales support. So programs for cross-shipped RMAs or for quick repairs, step up programs, upgrades if your GPU dies and that unit is out of life uh, for production. And further than that, there's localization support for different countries, different regions, different languages. There's shipping and logistics support that NVIDIA is not structured currently to handle and RMA support in countries outside of the US, where again, NVIDIA is not really set up to handle it yet. And then there's stuff like OC designs, software, and enthusiast tools that make it fun to use the card beyond just plugging it into a system, even though NVIDIA, at least at the executive level, really seems like it wants to go the Apple approach of make it brain dead stupid to use, which would be a tragic loss in the video card market if it ever is successful in that. Critically, partners also provide competition with each other. Because there are so many different teams in different parts of the world all competing with each other to try and figure out, we've all got the same core, what do we do to sell a card to someone? That drives innovation and that drives design in a way that even NVIDIA with its infinite computing power to do CFD, for example, it just it can't keep up with the amount of innovation that can come from that amount of people because it's not always just about the cooling design. There's other factors too. And ultimately, it just keeps choice and the market healthy. Now, NVIDIA has told us time and time again that we're not trying to displace our partners. We love working with our partners. Our partners are great. We're not trying to get rid of them. Uh, and that's fine. But what's happening here is the prices are still bad for consumers. And the message to NVIDIA here is if you want people to stop complaining about it, then fix it. Either bring them down or, uh, I don't know, kill the product lot. Oh, wait, they've already done that. They already unlaunched the 12. Well, it set a good precedent. So all the discussion about the partners, I don't want to take away from the core of the issue because the partners do provide value. Uh, and the point of including that was NVIDIA doesn't really seem to think so, which is odd because they're the ones who got NVIDIA to where they are today. Don't forget your roots. But beyond that, the pricing is clearly untenable. We've known this since our review where we showed the value was just disproportionately bad compared to basically anything else that was relevant. Uh, and the reason we're following up with it here is because we're doing a stock check and we saw all the 4080s in stock everywhere and uh, we're curious about it. So there you go. That's the end of the, the research, talking to partners, pulling together the numbers and just kind of thinking about it really. It's just, it's a partially scripted video and partially unscripted rant about the state of the 4080. And the 7900 XT, by the way, is its own problem. Uh, we talked about that in the review. Maybe we'll talk about it more later. But the only action item right now is if you're looking for something cheaper than a 4090, just wait because the prices are going to come down. In fact, we're pushing this video through faster because we think they will probably come down soon and we'd have to rework the entire video. So hopefully we're right about that and hopefully they do come down sometime before or around CES, early January, when NVIDIA is rumored to be launching at least the 4070 Ti, if not also something like a 4070. We'll see how those do, but uh, 
now is the time to start thinking about price. And even, you know, it's not, it's not the same as it was with the 30 series. NVIDIA can no longer sell GPUs simply by making them. They have to be compelling now. There was a time, especially during early COVID, where everyone suddenly needed high-end PCs at home that they could sell literally anything they made just because it existed. That time has passed. And it may take a little bit of latency there for NVIDIA to fully realize it and recognize the problem that they are now creating for themselves in the future, but they will eventually realize it. And you should at least wait until that point to pull the trigger on something lower end than a 4090. The 4090 only kind of gets away with it because it's the absolute best. And I, what do you do about that? But for most people, you're just, you gotta buy the old inventory that's still new in box, potentially the used inventory, AMD, or wait. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more as always. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to help us out directly or patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Thank you for watching. We'll see you all next time.